We are nine days from the first pitch, Tennessee versus Texas Tech next Friday in Arlington, Texas. I think we got a pretty good idea who's taking that mound on Friday night. Probably a pretty good idea who's taking it on Saturday. But beyond that, there's not a lot of info out there right now. I'm going to take my best uh, guess at it. We're going to take a look at who the guys are. We're going to try to project this thing right after this intro. Happy Wednesday once again. This is Frank Rock, the House of Orange Sports Channel coming at you. Make sure, like always, that you like, subscribe, check this thing out for me. Uh, any, anybody that may be a Tennessee baseball fan not finding any coverage or Tennessee basketball fan not finding any coverage, send them this way. Uh, that's what this channel's game is going to be. I've said it numerous times on numerous episodes. My thing's going to be baseball and basketball. Primary, I love baseball. Got a lot of experience with it. Had some pretty awesome opportunities coaching wise to coach some uh, pretty big time players over the years. So, uh, you know, uh, just a guy talking baseball on here, a guy talking basketball as well. And of course, there could be plenty of football, make no mistake about it. But I've got to examine that process, find something unique that others are not doing because it's the same game's being replicated and copied from other outlets out there who've already kind of established their game, and then others are taking that and trying to copy the same thing. But let's get right into this thing. So projecting the rotation, but I'm also going to look at the other roles on this as well. I'm a betting man, Friday night, first pitch, Tennessee goes out on the field. QB1, Drew Beam's going to take them out. That's going to happen. You know, heaven forbid there's not some injury or something like that in the meantime. Drew Beam, Friday night, he's going to be your Friday night guy. And looking back at Tony Vitello's press conference from when they had that opening press conference, just looking for more consistency out of him, looking for him to be that innings eater guy. Last year, his strikeouts were up. Uh, of course, he did throw more innings, but ERA was up quite a bit. Opponents batting average, home runs, all was up quite a bit. I'd like to see him get that back down under three this year. As it was under three his freshman year, went up to 3.63 last year. And I'd like to see him get that back down this year. Um, your Saturday guy, more than like A.J. Russell. He was a freshman last year, did some good things. And from what I've been reading, uh, a lot of this, according to Ben McKee, what he's putting on there is that Russell looks good right now. And this Sunday one is kind of interesting. I don't know that I agree with this. And, and maybe this is where Tennessee goes with it. But if I'm looking at it and – as to how I'm putting it. I could go two ways with this because the college game's different than the majors. You're not going to see a closer come in and throw four or five innings. You know, it's just not going to happen. You're lucky to see him throw more than one. Last year, we saw Chase Burns come in and bail some people out numerous times at the end of the year. Now, granted, Burns wasn't, he had a rough year out of the rotation. Once he went to that bullpen and hats off to him, he knew he was gone. He knew he was gone. He still come in and he pitched his ass off at the end of the year. And, you know, he really bailed Chase Dolander out a lot. Dolander did not have that good of a year, not by his standards last year. And he bailed Andrew Lindsay out a little bit in the tournament. I thought, I didn't think Lindsay had his best stuff. And, or I'm sorry, he bailed Dolander out. He come in for being some as well and locked it down. But who could be that guy? You know, Go back a few years ago, Tony had Sean Hunley. He wasn't afraid to go to him early if needed. You know, I think specifically in the their last game in Omaha when they went, not last year, but the first time when Blade Tidwell, he he pulled him. He, he knew it wasn't going. He brought Hunley in. It didn't work out, but he wasn't above, above bringing Hunley in early. He wasn't above going with uh, Ben Joyce. Even though Joyce wasn't a primary closer, they went more Redmond Walsh, which I always kind of questioned that one. But, you know, it, it worked out most of the time. He wasn't afraid to go Ben Joyce multiple innings. Uh, like I said, last year with Burns, you know, especially when they got to the tournament, Burns was going multiple innings on it. Uh, 
Again, you don't see that in the pros, but getting back to my point on Sunday, I'm seeing Nate Sneed, the transfer from Wichita State. I'm seeing right now he's throwing 99 to 101. That's bringing some heat. You know, what? what's his control like? What's his secondary pitches like? So is he a guy, I, I, the way I'm kind of reading it, it seems like he's maybe a Sunday guy, but could he be more effective? He only had a couple starts at Wichita State, maybe like three. So do they have him stretched out enough for it? Or could he be that Chase Burns dude throwing up around 100? You know, what kind of secondary pitches does he have? Because I kind of saw they need to have a little little meeting with him to kind of get him going back. But things are looking good now from what I'm seeing. So is it him in that Sunday spot? Maybe it gives him an advantage over other teams. Or could he step into that Chase Burns, that Sean Hunley, that Ben Joyce type role where he can come in and really shut teams down? They got some other guys that are interesting. You got Xander Seacrest. He's he started numerous games, more midweek guy. Could he factor into that Sunday rotate? Could it be one of these freshmen, like a Matthew Dallas was top 100 according to perfect game coming in from what I'm seeing? He's looking really good in these scrimmages. Could it be A.J. Causey, transferred from Jacksonville State? He was their Friday night guy last year, had an ERA over five, though. Um, you know, who else? Could it be another freshman possibly sneaking? I mean, they didn't start a freshman last year in rotation, but two years ago you had Burns and Bean who went Friday, Sunday, respectively. And uh, so they're not above going with a freshman. You know, another guy I'm intrigued to see that they talked about where Tony Vitello was asked about this specific player. And I want to quote it. This was some Rocky Top Insider. This was in, you know, if you go back and listen to the press conference, on there, he was asked about Marcus Phillips who's a two-way guy, and apparently they're going to have numerous two-way guys. But his um, he talked about him and said, I'm glad I don't have to face him as a hitter. And I know it was said back in the fall when they were talking about it. He asked the players who they didn't like to face, and it was Marcus Phillips. Now, he said uh, on Marcus Phillips, he said, we've got to remind ourselves he's basically a freshman, and he's a freshman from a cold-weather state. I mean a really cold-weather state. But – He's not a freshman is the thing about it. So last year due to injury, he was at a junior college, but he really didn't play. So Tony says he's, he's not in the infant stage, but he's very early stages of his career. So he said that Phillips deserves the patience of the coaching staff, the fans, and himself. Um, but he's excited to see, you know, what Phillips can do. So based on saying that, could this be a guy who factors in you know, I don't know if his role he's stretched out to start. Could he be a guy who factors in more late in the rotation? Is he a dude just comes in the middle, possibly? They have, they have plenty of options. They have a lot of left-handers, too. You have Wyatt Evans coming back off of injury. I think you would have seen a bigger role out of him. Obviously, you didn't see it last year because he was injured, but I think he would have had a big role in this team. Uh, the stash, Kirby Cannell, he's back. He's he's pitched a lot of innings down there. Is he more of a late innings guy? Is he more of a specialty? come in and get an out or two, possibly. Um, you know, just looking at different guys, when I look at this rotation, look at the picture. Aaron Combs, that's a guy that they think a lot of. You know, just going on the guys I know. They got Chris Stamos coming in, grad transfer from Cal. Last year, he had a high ERA, but he did average about just under 14 strikeouts per nine innings. So, you know, that's a guy, obviously, there's something that Tony and Frank liked bringing him in, even though he had that higher ERA. Talk about Nate Sneed. That's a guy I'm high on. That's a guy. I like the guys that bring heat. Again, I'm interested what his secondary pitches are, but does he factor in Sunday or would he be better used as that lockdown, that closer type guy? That that guy fascinates me. I'm curious to see what he does. Uh, other pitchers, J.J. Garcia, Andrew Benke, uh, let's see, uh, I mentioned Wyatt Evans, Chris Stamos, you got Aaron Combs, and then there's Austin Hunley. You've got uh, Secrets, Hunter Sloop. So you got some guys who redshirt, and then you've got, you know, they signed a lot of left-handers in their freshman class. Numerous guys projecting as two-way guys. And, you know, Matthew Dallas, like I said, is the guy I'm seeing the most about. But, you know, I'm seeing some stuff looking pretty good as well with – Dylan Loy out of Pigeon Forge, seeing, you know, seeing some stuff out of 
Bryson Thacker, seeing some stuff, mentioning out Braden Sharp. So they have options. And, I, and I'm from what he talked about with the freshmen in that press conference is they're excited about down the road. So I don't know how much you'll factor them in. But if a guy like Dallas is too good to keep out of the game, too good to keep off the field. You may see him more. Could he possibly creep into that Sunday role? Uh, a lot of unknowns right now. A lot of unknowns with this pitching staff. Just just Sunday starter. And you know, I don't know for sure A.J. Russell Saturday. I think that's the assumption on it. So Sunday starter, closer. Not a lot of info out on those. I'm, I'm going to project one of the two is Nate Sneed. Going from there, could it be Marcus Phillips? They talk pretty highly of him, but is it do they ease him in? Could Kirby Cannell possibly do it? Could Wyatt Evans, what's his standpoint coming off his arm injury from last year? Could he factor in as possibly a Sunday starter? Possibly that closer, but they, could Seacrest be that guy? He's going to factor in somewhere, whether he's a Sunday starter, whether he's you know middle bullpen guy but it there's a lot of potential on this staff you know they've recruited well they brought in guys out of the portal well a couple of them you look their eras but you look at also their k's per nine and i know they're high on that that is something they're high on so I, i'm excited to see who takes them out on sunday I'm, i mean i'm just excited in general for baseball cannot wait for it uh some of your lower level colleges they're already playing uh, they started this past weekend. And so, you know, your power five is stuff about two weeks behind. This thing's close, man. Nine days out. I'm going to bring more along the way. There'll be more news. I'm sure there'll be more dropping about who's going in rotation, who's going to be closing. They're scrimmaging a lot through the week. So waiting to hear more on those scrimmages and then see what they do next week leading up to when they leave for Texas. But Stay tuned for more on baseball, more on basketball. I'll be bringing you tonight, post-game LSU. Let's hope things go as is. If you haven't already, check out uh, where I released earlier today, the keys to victory. And then last night, I released the preview of that game as well. But as always, guys, thank you for just for your support. My name's Frank Rock, House of Orange. Enjoy your evening. And as always, go Vols.